Practice Test Number 1, Section 1, Listening Comprehension. Directions. Listening Comprehension Section. In this section of the test, you will demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. You will find the audio tracks for this section on the CD-ROM included with this book. There are three parts to this section with different directions for each part. Answer all the questions according to what the speakers say or imply. When you take the actual TOEFL test, you will not be allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Try to work on this sample test in the same way. Part A. Directions. In Part A you will hear two people having short conversations. After each conversation you will hear a question. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers and choose the best answer. Listen to an example. On the recording, you hear. Let's go for a walk in the park, Jim. I'd love to, but I'm beat. What does the man say? In your book, you read, A. He is too tired to walk in the park. B. He agrees to go walking in the park with her. C. He is not Jim. His name is Pete. D. He doesn't know what to do. You learn from the conversation that the man is beat, an idiomatic expression meaning very tired. Therefore, the best answer to the question, what does the man say, is A. Question number one. If I were you, I'd go through pre-registration and avoid the lines. Not a bad idea. What does the woman think of the man's suggestion? Question number two. We sighted over half a dozen pigeons flying around our classroom. Sounds like something out of that film, The Birds. What was the woman's reaction? Question number three. Jane's sister is an associate professor of nursing at the school uptown. I think my roommate had her as a teacher last year. Who was a student at the nursing school last year? Question number four. Every day at noon, the school symphony puts on a concert in the chapel. I had no idea. What does the woman mean? Question number five. Where were you this afternoon? Didn't I tell you? Our class went on a field trip. Where was the woman? Question number six. What do you feel like doing? Honestly, I feel like skipping class, but I wouldn't dare. What does the woman say? Question number seven. Will you go to business school? Not unless I can't find a job out there. Does the woman plan to go to business school? Question number eight. Did you catch the assignment? Are you kidding? That loudspeaker never works properly. What did the woman mean? Question number nine. What are you writing? Oh, I've decided to start keeping a journal on the advice of my creative writing instructor. What did the woman's teacher suggest? Question number 10. 
I'm afraid I can't read this. Can you type? I wish I could. What does the man imply? Question number 11. If we don't hurry, we'll miss the first half of the movie. Settle down. It will only be previews then anyway. What is the woman's reaction? Question number 12. Do you know when John and Mary will pick us up? Just as soon as they drop off their daughter at day camp. What will John and Mary do? Question number 13. Excuse me, can you tell me where the philosophy section is? It's over there, behind the row of sale books on the middle aisle. Where did this conversation take place? Question number 14. What was that? I have no idea. It sounded like some sort of explosion. What did the woman hear? Question number 15. Would you be interested in going to the county fair with us? Well, it depends. How much does the fair cost? What does the woman plan to do? Question number 16. Had I known how quickly this class would fill up, I would have gone through pre-registration. Well, I tried to warn you. What does the woman imply? Question number 17. Come on in, folks. Hurry up. Curtain goes up in five minutes. Oh, no. I, I can't find my ticket. Where did this conversation probably take place? Question number 18. For our first class, we will just concentrate on your serve. I thought this was supposed to be a more advanced class than this. What is the woman's profession? Question number 19. Let's face it. We're in this way over our heads. I'll say. What does the woman mean? Question number 20. I think your professor just offered you a window of opportunity. So you think I should go for it, right? What does the woman think of the professor's offer? Question number 21. What are you majoring in? I'm torn between chemistry and biology. What does the man mean by this? Question number 22. We'll pick up next week with the Norman Conquest. Excuse me, but what did you say? What does the man want to know? Question number 23. What took you so long to get here? Traffic was backed up for over an hour because of some accident. Why was the man late? Question number 24. When will our midterm be? Dr. Jones said it would be week after next. What does the woman want to know?
Question number 25. Do you know when our spring break is? Oh, I hope it will be the second week of March again because I've already bought my plane ticket for home. What is the man's response? Question number 26. Has anyone taken your order yet? We don't even have any menus. What does the man want? Question number 27. Where are you living now? For the moment I'm in Riley Hall, but I'll be moving out to Jones Hall next week. Where does the man live? Question number 28. Excuse me, can you tell me which one is the history building? Sorry, I I'm new here too, but I think you can find it on the map in front of Butler Hall. Where is the history building? Question number 29. I'm worn out. How about you? Well, we've been going at this algebra problem for over an hour. Why don't we stop and take a break? What does the man suggest? Question number 30. How was Professor Weiss's seminar today? I hate to say it, but I overslept again. What did the man say about the lecture? Part B. Directions. On this part of the test you will hear slightly longer conversations. After each conversation you will hear several questions. Neither the conversations nor the questions will be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in this book and choose the best one. Then on your answer sheet find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember that you cannot take notes or write on the test pages in any way. Questions 31 through 34 are based on the following talk. Excuse me, is this Professor Wilson's office? Yes it is, but she's on another line. Would you like to hold? About how long do you think she will be? I just want to set up an appointment to discuss my research paper with her. It's hard to say. If you leave your name and number, though, I can have her TA call you back and arrange an office visit. I know she usually has hours on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons from 3 to 5. Yes, that would be great. This is Meg Phillips at 512-334-3655. Okay, that's Miss Phillips at 512-334-6675? No, it's 334-3655. Thank you. I'll give her the message. Question number 31. What is the man's profession? Question number 32. Where does the man work? Question number 33. Why does the woman want to talk to the professor? Question number 34. What is the woman's phone number? Questions 35 through 38 are based on the following talk. Good morning. Welcome to Psychology 101. I'm Professor Aitkins, and this is my teaching assistant, John Walters, who's a graduate student in the department. He will pass around a sign-in sheet so that I can check and make sure that all of you here are listed on my roster. Yes? I'm not sure if I'm in the right place. Is this abnormal psychology? That's two doors down the hall, Professor Green's class. Is this intro to psychology required before abnormal? 
Generally, yes, but you'll need to see your professor about that. It all depends on what year you are, your GPA, and so forth. Now, if there are no further interruptions, I'd like to give you a brief overview of what I'll expect out of you this semester. Question number 35. When did this conversation take place? Question number 36. Who is John Walters? Question number 37. What kind of course does Professor Aikens teach? Question number 38. What does the woman want to know? Part C. Directions. On this part of the test you will hear several talks. After each talk you will hear some questions. Neither the talks nor the questions will be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in this book and choose the best one. Listen to an example. On the recording, you hear. The largest bipedal carnivorous animal which ever existed was Carcharodontos saharicus, a name meaning sharp-toothed dinosaur of the Sahara. Measuring 45 feet long with 5-inch teeth, the species in fact was only discovered just a couple of years ago when an American paleontologist came across a partially exposed skull in the Sahara Desert part of Morocco. Carcharodontos saharicus, or CS, as it is affectionately called, is related to the famous Tyrannosaurus rex, but outsizes its cousin by an average of six feet in length. Both of these monsters lived during the late Cretaceous period, or about 96 million years ago. In a sense, CS is a missing link in the dinosaur world, because fossil records of this type of bipedal carnivore had been found on every continent but Africa. Now listen to a sample question. What would be a good title for this talk? In your book you read A. Dinosaurs of the Sahara B. Tyrannosaurus rex C. A new species of dinosaur D. Bipedal carnivorous dinosaurs The best answer to this question What would be a good title for this talk? is C a new species of dinosaur. Remember, you should not take notes or write on your test pages. Questions 39 through 44 are based on the following talk. How many people do you know who would describe their life as being unstressful? Probably very few, if any at all. Being stressed out seems to be the number one epidemic of the modern age. According to many mental health workers, Almost any event in one's life can be classified as stress-inducing. Not only do unpleasant experiences create anxiety for most people, but even pleasant experiences may be considered stressful if they cause a major change in one's life. For example, most psychologists consider marriage and the birth of one's first child as two of the most stressful events one will ever encounter, in spite of the fact that these can also bring a great deal of joy to the individuals involved. These kinds of stresses are sometimes called eustress. More often, negative stresses or distress is what comes to most people's mind when they hear the word stress. These types of stress can include anything from the tension one may feel when waiting for someone who is half an hour late, to having to deal with serious illness or even the death of a loved one. Still, all types of stress are normal and are an unavoidable part of all of our lives. So what is necessary is for people to find better ways of coping with stressful events. For some people, simply beginning a regular exercise program or cutting down on caffeine may do the trick. But for others, the stress can become so overwhelming that seeing a mental health therapist becomes necessary. Thousands today claim that pharmaceuticals have done wonders, helping them manage stress better on a day-to-day -day basis. The key point to remember is that since stress cannot be avoided, 
it is essential to find the best ways to deal with the conflicts and tensions we all must face. Question number 39. Mental health experts would probably agree with which of the following statements? Question number 40. Which of the following events would probably not be labeled stressful according to the lecturer? Question number 41. Which of the following might help a person cope with stress? Question number 42. Which of the following adjectives does the lecturer associate with stress? Question number 43. A synonym for distressing is... Question number 44. Which of the following is a true statement according to the lecture? Questions 45 through 50 are based on the following talk. Welcome to the Fall 99 orientation of the Adult and Continuing Education Program at Butler College. We are very proud of the fact that our adult education program was one of the first of its kind in America and the first in our state. For the last 75 years, we have led the way in many special programs, such as our lifelong learners classes, our Arts in the City program, and our business courses for continuing ed. And as many of you already know, we have just cut the ribbon on our Adult Education Computer Center, made possible through the generous donations of the Strom and Wingfield Family Foundation. We hope that if you weren't able to attend last week's opening reception, you will find time in the very near future to tour this state-of-the-art facility. With your school ID, you will be able to get a computer pass free of charge. The labs will be open Monday through Thursday, 9 to 9, and on Friday and Saturday from 9 to 5.30. We have hired computer experts and graduate students from our computer science program, so you will always have knowledgeable people to train you on the latest technology, which we have in our lab. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Jane Robertson, Vice President of Continuing Ed, who will introduce the professors and give a brief synopsis of their programs. Then, she will introduce you to Jeremy Wells, one of our former students, who has put together an excellent slide presentation for you about the department. Question number 45. Who is the speaker? Question number 46. Where is the talk most likely being given? Question number 47. When do you think this talk was given? Question number 48. Which of the following is not true about the new computer center? Question number 49. What do you need to be able to use the computer lab? Question number 50. Who will show a slide presentation? 